Hey guys, it's Christine, also known as Ivy Winter. Thank you for joining me for my video back um, after having my son. Um, it's been a long time. Uh, it's been about eight weeks since, and of course, as soon as I start recording, we have a truck going by. It's been eight weeks since I have uploaded a video, maybe actually a little bit more, eight weeks since I've recorded a video. Um, because having a newborn is a lot of work and you don't have a lot of downtime. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that, but I'm really excited to be making videos and be back. I appreciate all of you who have just been super patient with me taking this hiatus. Um, obviously, uh, it's like I said, a lot of work, especially in the first few weeks. And so I just knew I wasn't gonna be able to juggle this and that. Um, I did come back to the TTA podcast uh, like three or four weeks ago. That's been really great. That was kind of like my slow, uh, uh, you know, way of kind of easing back in because after a while your days kind of are the same and I just wanted to feel like I was doing something for me again. Um, and it's been really great to be back on the podcast and doing that with Rob every week. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm ready to start making videos again. Granted, um, I don't know if they're gonna be weekly. I used to always try to do at least one a week. Um, I'm gonna do the best that I can. Um, but again, it's it's all about finding moments. Like right now, um, my son is asleep <laughs> and who knows how long that'll be for. It could be 20 minutes, could be an hour. Um, so I do what I can in all of those like times. And sometimes, you know, laundry or you know, just things around the house or other errands are gonna take precedent over making a video. And then before you know it, the day is gone and the next day is gone and the next day is gone. Um, so I will do my best to try to make as many videos as I can. Um, and I, and part of the reason why I even wanted to just do that is because like I said, it's, it's good to get back into something that I'm doing for me. But anyway, um, enough about that. I wanted to talk a little bit about my, my whole experience. Um, with giving birth and, and being a mom now. Um, it's pretty crazy to think that I'm in the mom club. It's like surreal. It's just weird to think of. Um, I said to Peter, you know, the day that he starts talking and calls me mom is gonna be very bizarre. But um, so on March 23rd, um, I gave birth to Grant Emerson. Um, and I will definitely put up some photos. Like I said, he's sleeping, so I don't have him here with me. Um, he was born 10 pounds, five ounces. He's a big, big boy. Um, even now, he hasn't had his two month checkup yet, but we think He's a little over 13 pounds already and only getting bigger. And his size was kind of important in how my whole birth story came about. Um, so when I was about 36 weeks, um, my ultrasounds were showing that he was a little large. And there is a, uh, you know, room for error with this, right? Like they can only guess so much in terms of the weight. It is not super accurate. Um, and there is a margin of error of, I think, up to 20%. Either way. So, you know, your baby could be bigger than they think or could be smaller than they think. And that was discussed with my doctor. And we said, let's wait. Let's get, like, a growth scan in a couple of weeks. See where he's at. See what they say. This was at, like, a different place. Um, and then at 38 weeks, I had a scan both at my doctor and at, like, an ultrasound specialist. And my doctor like physically felt the baby and was like, yeah, we all think that he's like around 10 pounds. And um, I am a very small person. You guys know this. If you've met me in the parks, you'll know this. I'm 5'2". Um, I don't weigh a lot. Um, and granted, that's not, it's not necessarily true that the smaller you are, the harder it would be to give birth to a large baby. But I also have a really narrow pelvis. So they were like, uh, we don't know <laughs> if you're gonna be able to do this, um, you know, the, the natural way, quote unquote. Um, I say that because I think that there's a weird stigma with C-sections not being natural and, and it's definitely still giving birth. Um, it's just a different way. Um, so I had to make a decision of if I wanted to try um, or if I wanted to schedule a C-section. And after weighing out um, the risks of both, I decided a scheduled C-section was probably the best for me. Um, 
it was a little difficult. I think I felt more sad than I expected, um, knowing that I was gonna have a scheduled C-section because you, I think there is a societal pressure to like give birth um, vaginally and like that's the way to do it. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I felt a little weird about it, but I'm totally fine with having done it now. Um, and it was definitely the right thing to do. Uh, so we scheduled it for March 24th, actually. Um, so the plan was Peter and I were gonna go into the city. His parents have an apartment in the Upper West Side. I was giving birth um, at NYU Langone in the city because my doctor is in the city. And we thought, okay, we're gonna go in the night before. It's gonna be great. It's scheduled. It'll be relaxing. And there's no like rushing to the hospital. We're gonna order dinner. We're gonna just enjoy our last night. We're gonna get up. We'll be at the hospital in 20 minutes. So much easier than coming from New Jersey. This is gonna be great. The morning of the 23rd happens. I'm working because I figure I'm gonna work half a day, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just gonna work up to the last minute that I can, and then, you know, that'll be it. And I start to get these like intense cramps, waves in my back, and I didn't think that it was contractions at first. I just thought I was having back pain because carrying such a large baby, I was huge. I will definitely put a photo up. I was massive um, by the end and I had such bad back pain, such bad, like I was just having so much pain in general my last trimester. And so I just thought, oh man, this is just something really bad is happening in my back from the weight of the baby, that's it. But then I realized, oh, this is coming in waves and like, that's weird. I'm not feeling it in the front. I'm just feeling it in my lower back, really intense, like as if like my whole lower back was seizing up. Um, so I remember chatting my coworkers and saying, I think maybe I'm having contractions. I'm gonna go lay down. Uh, just give me a few minutes. And that was the last thing from me before I had this kid. Oops, sorry, um, to my coworkers. So I laid down, I started timing them, and I'm like, yeah, this is, this has to be contractions. They're happening just in my back. I'm just having back labor, which is awful. Let me tell you, people say it's awful, it's awful. I'm not feeling them in the front, but I think that's what this is. So we call my doctor and they're like, come into the office, we're gonna hook you up, we're gonna be sure that they're contractions and that they're consistent before we say anything about going to the hospital. So of course I'm like, oh my God, you're kidding me. It's the day before I am scheduled for a C-section and Grant decides that he wants to come now. Nope, not waiting one day, not doing it. So we go to the doctor, I get hooked up, Sure enough, after like 30 minutes, they're like, so you're definitely in early labor and you have to go to the hospital and we're gonna bump up the C-section with whatever doctor is there um, today. So I leave that office, I get into the car, I turn to Peter and I go, yep, we're having a baby today. And he was like, oh my God. Um, we go to the hospital, they were able to get us in. Um, we had to wait about 40 minutes before I could get into the like pre-op area. And that was when my contractions got really bad. I was very lucky that they weren't too bad even on the drive-in and all of that, but they started to get bad while I was waiting. And uh, you know, we got there and was all set up to have the C-section and had to breathe my way through contractions while they were putting in the spinal like epidural. It was, there was a lot going on. Um, and I had a great doctor and everyone there was amazing. I have to say, um, I got a rave about NYU. Fantastic, fantastic hospital. If you're giving birth in New York City, I highly, highly recommend it. Every single nurse, everyone that we dealt with was like, amazing there. Um, so I'm breathing through those contractions. We put in the epidural, we get all ready. Um, very wild experience. I mean, you can't feel anything basically from, you know, lower chest down. Um, you feel like pressure and like, you know that something's happening, but you don't feel anything beyond that. Um, it's really strange. 
Um, so Peter was able to come in and he was able to sit with me and I was like, let's just talk about things because this is super weird and trippy and I don't want to think about what's happening. It's, it felt long and yet Peter said it wasn't at all. Um, the, the faster part is when they actually get the baby out and it actually takes a little bit longer to stitch you up. Um, and I remember just hearing him cry and I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. And then all the nurses are like, oh my God, he's like massive. And they like loved him. They were like, they couldn't get over how big he was. Um, he did great uh, as soon as he was out and 10 pounds, five ounces made me feel better about the decision that I made about having a C-section. Then it got a little weird. Um, I started to get very shaky, which happens from the epidurals. And they tell you that, so that's gonna happen. You're gonna get shaky, almost like you're shivering, but you're not cold. It's just like from the medication. Um, but I was so shaky towards the end of the surgery, like as they were stitching me up and then afterwards that I couldn't do any skin to skin with Grant. And that was a super bummer. Peter had to hold him for most of that time, for over an hour, because I just could not stop shaking. Like it was intense and unintentional. My muscles were like seizing up and it was awful. And the nurse that I had, he gave me like this like inflatable warming blanket, which granted I wasn't shaking cause I was cold, but it still gives you like that comfort. Um, and that was going on for a long time. And I know Peter was looking at me and he was like, I was kind of nervous seeing you shaking so much. But more than that, um, the whole time I was in the operating room, my blood pressure was fine. And then towards the end or like, right after it's super spiked up and i remember the nurses were taking it over and over and over like every 15 minutes and the nurse was saying to himself like i don't like these numbers they're making me nervous and i couldn't see what the numbers were because you know the machines up here but i could just tell by the commotion around me I've had multiple nurses coming looking at the numbers, my doctor's comments looking at the numbers. I'm having multiple people asking me, do you have any history of high blood pressure? Did you have any high blood pressure during your pregnancy? And I'm like, no, 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 you know, I've been fine this whole time, never had an issue my entire life. Um, that was a bit scary because there was a lot of, of commotion. So they were taking my blood pressure every 15 minutes for several hours, um, which was really intense. Um, they came to me at one point and said, okay, uh, you know, at this point with what we're seeing, we're gonna call it postpartum preeclampsia. So preeclampsia is when you have high blood pressure during your pregnancy, and that's kind of rare. I mean, it happens, but it's, it's not as common as people might think it is. Um, and then postpartum preeclampsia is even rarer. So lucky me, I won that lottery. Um, I had very high blood pressure the entire time that I was in the hospital. They kept me for three nights because they did not want to let me go after two nights um, with that high of a blood pressure. They had to check my blood pressure every so many hours on top of, you know, all the other in and out of doctors that happened. So I'm pretty sure I got three hours of sleep in three days when I was in the hospital. It was really rough. Um, and it was, it, that was just a really scary, a uh, few days because every time they would come and take my blood pressure I could see the concern on their faces um, they ha they immediately put me on like all this blood pressure medication I was on two different medications I was taking one of them two times a day the other one three times a day so I'm getting woken up for blood pressure I'm getting woken up for medications I'm getting woken up for regular food I'm getting woken up for uh, you know uh, lactation consulting like it was just super super intense um, and kind of crazy. And when they finally let me go, I had to go home with all of this medication. So I was like waking up at like four, like three, it was three times a day. And one of the times was like four in the morning that I had to take this medication. And if I wasn't already up because I was feeding Grant, then it was just like an added time that I had to get up. It was an awful first couple of weeks. Um, and I had to monitor my blood pressure at home, which was still pretty high. Um, and then slowly I was able to taper off the blood pressure medication. I actually fully went off of it last week. And ever since, my blood pressure has been maintaining a decent uh, uh, number, which has been great. Because um, the fear is that if it keeps being an issue or it starts to creep up, 
the postpartum preeclampsia could turn into long-term blood pressure issues for the rest of your life. Um, so fortunately, I've been good. Um, I'm still monitoring it every single day, but um, things have been better. But it was, it was, I mean, it was scary. And going home, being on all of those medications. And, and then they also had to put me on a blood thinner that I had to inject for two weeks, which was super fun. Loved doing that. Um, they just do that at the bat with C-sections um, to reduce the risk of blood clots. So I'm giving myself a shot every day. I'm taking all these medications. I'm trying to take care of a baby. I'm trying to heal from a C-section. Um, to say that I was emotionally overwhelmed the first couple of weeks might be an understatement. Um, but like I said, I am, I'm off all the medications. I'm doing so much better now. I am pretty much healed. Um, you know, it takes months really to fully, fully heal from a C-section, but I'm healed enough that I can start working out with light weights. I can walk. Um, I can lift things more than just Grant, um, even though he was so heavy anyway. Um, so I, I healed really well and pretty quickly. Um, but it was quite an ordeal. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, but at the same time, you know, 100% worth it. Um, Grant is amazing. He said he's like about eight weeks now. He started smiling a couple of weeks ago. Last night, um, as we're recording this, he just discovered his right hand. He hasn't discovered his left one yet. <laughs> um, but just like seeing a person become a person and like learn things and become aware and um, it's wild. And it's wild how fast it happens how fast we develop as people in our like first year. It's just, it's crazy. Um, and if any of you watching have kids, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. It's just a crazy thing to watch and experience. I joke that I live Groundhog's Day every two to three hours, but it's true. I mean, you know, he wakes up and we go through the routine of changing a diaper and feeding and playtime and what have you, and then going to sleep and then doing it all over again. Um, you know, he sleeps, longer through the night now. When I say longer, I mean like four to five hour chunks. Um, it's gonna be a while before I get a full eight hours of sleep. I probably look tired, um, but uh, it's still, it's great. I think now that he's becoming like more aware and smiling and reacting to things, it's like really great feedback. Um, but like I said, because of the schedule, it's so hard to stop and like make videos and stuff. So, um, I just appreciate you guys hanging in there. Um, I promise that I will have Grant on a video at some point um, when he's not fussing and he's not sleeping. Um, but overall, it's just been it's just been really, really amazing. I guess the next step is to just plan our first trip to Disney, <laughs> which probably won't be for a while. Um, I will be going for the 50th anniversary on my own. Um, which will be a nice little break in the end of September. I don't know when I'll actually bring in Grant for his first trip. Something to think about. Would love suggestions for anyone who has kids who has brought them to Disney. Like, when do you think was the best age to bring them for the first time? I went for my first time when I was two. I didn't remember any of it, but we had it um, recorded on a VHS tape, and so I just watched that as a kid. Um, but I don't know if I'm gonna bring him that young, but yeah, I would love, I would love, love suggestions of when you think is the best time to bring a child um, for his first trip. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna talk more about the 50th anniversary. There's obviously a lot of changes happening in the parks. You guys know that I don't necessarily do videos about every single change in news. There are plenty of other channels that are great out there for that. But I do want to talk more about how planning has changed because of what's going on with COVID and the continuous changes of policies, right? Like now you don't have to wear masks outdoors anymore, but you do on rides and indoors and, you know, they're getting rid of temperature checks and like, how is this going to affect your planning? Um, and how it's affecting my planning. So expect those videos, expect, my review of the Star Wars Book Club book. I did not forget. <laughs> it's just that it all happened at like a crazy time. Um, and yeah, I have a lot of good things lined up. It's just gonna take me a little bit longer than usual to get videos out. That's just where my life is these days. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about grants, about 
myself, whatever, let me know in the comments below. I would love to do like another FAQ video soon. Those are always fun to do. Um, if you like this video, then like it. If you like me, you should subscribe. It's so great to be back. And I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great rest of the day. Bye.